previously in Finero. In Romans 3, he says, What if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? And verses 4 says, God forbid, let God be true, but every man a liar. The word of God is so broad. It's too big. We can never finish it. Even if we try, it is too much. Yet all of it, he said, is yeah and amen. In Numbers chapter 23, verses 19, the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. The Amplified says, neither is he a son of man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised. In other words, God is not intimidated by what he spoke on your life. However big it is. Neither should you be intimidated. If he says by his stripes you are healed, you are healed. If he says you're blessed, he means it, you are. The word of God cannot fail. Because this is the absoluteness of his power. The Bible says he has exalted his word above his name. In other words, if I fail to provide for you, then I'm not provision. I would lose my name if I can't exalt my word. He has exalted his word above his name. Tell your neighbor, believe God. Joshua 21 verses 43. The Bible says, And the Lord gave unto Israel all the land which he swear to give unto their fathers, and they possessed it and dwelt therein. And the Lord gave them rest round about according to all that he swear unto their fathers. And there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. There failed not out any of the good thing which God had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. All! No man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. That's why he says, give yourself wholly to these things. Meditate on them. He says that your profiting will appear unto all. There's a testimony Paul spoke of the people in Thessalonica. They began as babes, but when the word of God came to these babes in Thessalonica, there is a way they responded to the word. And that is why I tell people it's important to know how to respond to the word. These words he says that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. You must learn how to participate in the word. He says, when the message we preached came to you, it was not just words. Something happened in you. The Holy Spirit put still in your conviction, you paid careful attention to the way we lived among you. And Paul had to say, and determined to leave yourselves in imitating us. You imitated the master. He says, because of that, all over the provinces, believers look up to you. The word has gotten around. Your lives are echoing the master's word. Not only in the provinces, but all over the place. The news of your faith in God is out. We don't even need to say anything anymore. You are the message. In Hebrews chapter 12 verses 2, he gives you the instruction of how to do this. He says, keep your eyes on Jesus. Two both began and finished this race we are in. The thing you're running, your master ran. The thing you're believing God for, your master finished it long ago. Get your eyes off what isn't working. Get your eyes off the economy. Get your eyes off your pay. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. The Bible says, study how he did it. Hallelujah. Just study. And the next verse says that when you find yourselves flagging in your faith, Go over that story again. Item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through, that will shoot adrenaline into your souls. And you say, mm, 
If death could not hold him, it can't kill. The story of Jesus is an inspiration. When I saw this thing, I started to read every way Jesus responded to devils, to the sick. When luck was there, how did he do it? Study him. Talitha Kumai, little girl, get up. Thy faith has made you whole. See how he did it. What he did do when he found a dead man? They tell him, Lazarus, your friend is dead. They say, oh God. No, he says, Lazarus' sickness shall not end in death. He's dead. It's okay. I am the resurrection and the life because he knows when he walks to that grave, no hell, no highway, no fire, no brimstone will stop the Son of God from raising Lazarus from the dead. Study your master. Item by item. He's on the cross. After they know that the man is on the cross, he tells them, it is. The church was birthed. <laughs> oh, brethren, for our light afflictions, which are but for a moment, they cannot be compared to the weight of the glory that shall be revealed at the appearance of our Christ while we look not at the things that are seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Study how he did it. What doesn't give Jesus pressure should not give you pressure. What does not make him lose sleep should not make you lose study. I'm talking about that person who can receive the worst news in the world and walk in the room with the biggest smile. They studied the story item by item. When they were going through stuff, they see the man on the cross, adrenaline pumps their souls. They get more faith in the morning. The more they are afflicted, the stronger they look. Because they know this is not come to kill them. And as you're doing it, God is saying, you're pumping adrenaline in your soul. That's how you receive faith. That's how you make the word of God work. You go around that story. The son of God never failed. I will never. I'll never. And for more of this, join us every Thursday at Umalugogo from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Finero, make manifest.